On November 4th, 2008, the American people elected Barack Obama as our 44th president, and on January 20th, 2009, he will be sworn in as the first African American president in American history. The era of change has begun. America is a place where all things are possible. On his way out, President Bush has been in the media reflecting on his eight years in office and trying to frame his legacy in his own words. The president and the vice president are spending their final month in office trying to convince us frequently and loudly that theirs was a secretly awesome administration. Well, let's list just a few of the things that went down under his command. Our sense of security proved an illusion. Our rights have been undermined and a few of them even lost. Our morals have been sacrificed, and our economy is being ravaged and looted. A, a year or two ago, when we talked about spending $100 million for a bridge to nowhere, that was considered a scandal across the country. Now we're talking about 1,000 uh, bridges to nowhere, and that's called a new stimulus plan. No one thing an easy task on its own, and as president, he accomplished all of that and more. Perhaps his legacy will be to go down in history as the greatest puppet ever. You can hate him and you can laugh at him, but the puppet served his purpose well by shielding the actors behind him. In him, blame has been shifted away from the real conspirators and is focused squarely on a player that appears to be exiting the stage, leaving all the other actors still in play. Let me tell you a little bit about those other actors. When the Council on Foreign Relations said they wanted to build a North American community, President Bush obliged them by arranging for annual meetings between himself and the leaders of Mexico and Canada, as well as establishing a cabinet-level network under the banner of the Security and Prosperity Partnership. The organization of the SPP fueled rumors of a North American Union. President Bush signed a formal agreement that will end the United States as we know it, and he took the step without approval from either the U.S. Congress or the people of the United States. The Council on Foreign Relations is a globalist think tank full of people who speak openly of their contempt for national sovereignty. They view sovereignty as an obstruction of business. The president of a sovereign nation should have no business catering to the whims of the Council on Foreign Relations. Elected on the promise of change, the American people should be able to expect that with President-elect Obama, Catering to the globalists at the CFR and other background players will come to an end. But it doesn't look much like that's going to happen. Obama has nominated Timothy Geithner to be his U.S. Treasury Secretary. Not only is Geithner a member of the CFR and a foe free trader, but he also contributed to a CFR task force report that led Congress to grant fast-track trade authority to President Bush, an essential building block in his security and prosperity partnership. Congress is under increasing pressure tonight to end President Bush's so-called fast-track trade authority. The Montana State Senate overwhelmingly passed a resolution demanding that Senator Max Baucus use his authority as Finance Committee Chairman to deny any renewal of fast tracks. Under fast track, Congress is only allowed a yes or no vote on any proposed trade deals. Obama's pick for the U.S. Treasury is particularly distressing in relation to the rumors of a regional or global currency. Already we see uh, talk in the newspapers, we see articles about a new international world reserve currency. <laughs> the Amero is the proposed new currency for the North American community, which is being uh, developed right now between Canada, the U.S., and Mexico to make a borderless community much like the EU, and uh, the dollar, Canadian dollar, U.S. dollar, and the Mexican peso replaced by the Amero. When rumors of the Amero reached the mainstream media, it was, of course, mocked as a conspiracy theory related to the North American Union and dubbed impossible. The gentleman from, from London who told Ross that mm -hmm. don't worry about the dollar, um, you should be more concerned with the Amero, which would be the equivalent of the Ural, only it would include Canada, the U.S., 
in Mexico. Um, my first question was going to be, what do you smoke? About? I, but, but maybe it's a non-starter. What, what, non what about 20 years from now, Craig? Uh, let's call it 40 years from now. That's when it took what it took Europe to do. And anybody who believes it's about a great European or North American union uh, is, is in the, the, the league of people who believe that Elvis is still alive. Well, there are a lot of those. <laughs> um, what? Yeah, so, <laughs> what do you think of this? Oh, Elvis is alive, I think that. No, uh, but, but, <laughs> here. What the media doesn't tell you as they debunk the Amero is that the CFR is endorsing and promoting the idea of regional currency. In an article titled, The End of National Currency, the Director of International Economics at the Council on Foreign Relations claims that in the face of globalization, monetary nationalism is a cause of financial crises and geopolitical tension. As a solution, he suggests that the world abandon unwanted currencies and replace them with dollars, euros, and multinational currencies as yet unborn. Roundly, detractors of the Amero claim that a regional currency could never happen because of the dollar's position as a reserve currency around the world. We already have a North American currency unit. It's actually the world currency unit. It's called the dollar. Okay? <laughs> I mean, we're dollarizing the world, apparently, and, and that's our whole strategy. Well, there's a problem. The dollar is being strategically devalued and rapidly becoming less attractive as a reserve currency. The government is simply pouring gasoline on a fire that it's set, and it's going to do a lot of damage with all these stimuluses and bailouts. Vince Peter is very concerned that by pouring money, gasoline onto the fire, in his uh, metaphor, uh, what you end up with is ultimately massive inflation down the pike. Do you think we're going to see that next year? And if not next year, do you think we're going to see it anytime soon? Yeah, I think that's the risk. I, I uh, don't disagree with Peter. I might disagree a little bit with the, with the end game, but I think inflation is part of the end game. This whole bailout plan that we've been watching unfold over the last few months is little more than the Federal Reserve creating money out of thin air and handing it out. In doing so, they devalue the dollar. The dollar showing signs of weakness today, dropping against most major currencies. You're yeah. running away from the yeah. dollar. What are you doing? Yeah. The government is creating inflation to pay for the bailouts. So if people don't want to get stuck with a bill, right, they don't want to have the currency that's being inflated away, which is the dollar. So they have to invest outside of the United States. They have to invest in companies that are denominated and pay dividends in currencies that are not the dollar. This Washington Post article calls our favorite CFR man, Timothy Geithner, the primary architect of the Bush administration's response to the financial crisis. The article elaborates on how Geithner worked closely with Bush's current Treasury Secretary, Hank Paulson, to devise the bailouts of the investment bank Bear Stearns and the insurance giant AIG. All of this at a time when talk of moving away from the dollar as a reserve currency is omnipresent. So if the dollar is being devalued and looking less and less like an option for reserve currency, what does that leave? It leaves the euro and multinational currencies as yet unborn, according to the CFR. President-elect Obama's nomination of CFR man Timothy Geithner doesn't exactly signal the kind of change we were promised. Indeed, if it signals a change at all, it demonstrates that his administration will pursue the agenda of the globalists at the Council on Foreign Relations even more aggressively. Being the optimist that I am, I will continue to hope for that change as I take a look at some of President-elect Obama's other nominations. Senator Barack Obama issued a warning to Pakistan today saying he would be prepared to order military attacks against al-Qaeda targets inside Pakistan with or without the approval of Islamabad. A senior Mumbai police official says the Pakistani militant group Lashkar-e-Taiba was responsible for the terror attacks that left at least 174 people dead. Pakistan is denying any involvement. One of the biggest challenges facing the United States right now is to keep Pakistan focused on the fight against the Taliban and Al-Qaeda on its western border with Afghanistan. There is a big concern that Pakistan will give up that fight if it has to move its troops to its eastern border with India. We are uh, clearly working very hard uh, to see if there are opportunities 
uh, to send additional forces sooner rather than later. The White House is watching with growing concern amid reports Pakistan is amassing some 20,000 troops along the Indian border. Tensions between the nuclear neighbors have been high since last month's Mumbai attacks, which India blames on Pakistan-based militants.